is up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we're in the brand new 2025 honda pilot courtesy of sioka honda of hanover in hanover pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so we are this one today because this is honda's three row suv there are some nice changes for the 2025 model year as well this is going to be now the third year for the fourth generation pilot and you do also get two years or 24,000 miles of complimentary maintenance as well which is always nice because that's going to save you some money so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing it's uh, as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2025 pilot lx is gone by the way for the 2025 model year so let me just start by saying that so it's going to bump the price up a little bit but sport trim level is going to start at 39,900 exl for 43,200 trail sport for 49,100 touring for 47,200 elite which is the one we are in today starting at 52,780 dollars and the black edition which is a new trim level for the 2025 pilot pilot starting at $54,280 so as far as front wheel drive all wheel drive goes that gets a little bit interesting so all wheel drive is going to come standard on the black edition the elite that we have today and the trail sport for all of the other trim levels front wheel drive comes standard you can still add all wheel drive to any of those other trims if you wanted to do that simply add $2,100 then to any of those prices but regardless of trim level that you go with power plant on the pilot is going to be the same powering the beast is a 3.5 liter direct injected v6 putting out 285 horsepower at 6100 rpm 262 pound feet of torque coming in at 5000 rpm power being sent to front wheels or all wheels through a 10 speed automatic with paddle shifters which you guys know of course we will be testing out here in a little bit but 0 to 60 time approximately 6.9 seconds top speed in case you're interested 111 miles per hour with mpg numbers coming in at 19 in the city 27 on the highway for the front wheel drive 19 city 25 then on the highway for the all-wheel drive but taking regular unleaded fuel saving you money yet again but so now before we do any kind of fun paddle shifter or acceleration test here in the pilot i did want to mention to you guys the drive modes there's actually a silver toggle switch located just behind the shift buttons and yes there are shift buttons this isn't a traditional shifter by the way so d slash s is going to be your basic drive n is for neutral r is for reverse p is for park some people ask that question so i always like to say it but again back to the drive mode silver toggle switch drive modes will include normal econ snow tow and sport and then also trail and sand for the all-wheel drive configurations only adjusting things like the shift points the throttle response steering sensitivity and the all-wheel drive system engagement then as well so now having got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put the paddle shifters here to the test first and let's see how quickly they are going to react for us here all right let's go ahead and test out the paddle shifters here we got our straightaway in three two one, go. All right, there is a slight delay. They're not too bad, but there is a slight delay to the paddle shifter. So wouldn't mind it if they were a bit quicker, but I'm still glad that they're there because what I always say is what you can do with the paddle shifters on an SUV at least is if it were to be snowing out here in PA and you're going down a hill, let's say, rather than actually hitting the brakes and risk sliding off the road, you can simply do a little bit of engine braking using this handy dandy left paddle shifter here. And then you're less likely to actually slide off the road because the engine is doing the braking. So that's pretty cool, I guess. But anyways, slight delay. It's all good. Let's now give back full control to the pilot here. Let's find one more straightaway and let's put the accelerator acceleration here to the test with the pilot having full control and let's see how quickly we can get this one here up the speed all right here it is beautiful straightaway here right in front of us in three two one go <laughs> Yeah, you're not going to have any issues with that. That's plenty of an acceleration to merge you onto any highway. So it's nothing crazy, but that was definitely a good acceleration. So I like it. And that was in sport driving mode too. So you always got that for you. But to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So up front, you will find 12.6 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 13 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 is your stopping distance goes, that comes in at 126 feet, which is pretty much average, pretty much par for the course there. SUVs typically come in in the upper 120s, if not the 130s. And some of them come in in the one teens if they're like Volvo or Mercedes Benz or something like that. So it's perfectly fine. As far as braking feel goes, 
it's as I would expect the Pilot to brake like. It feels like my three row SUV. I have a Hyundai Santa Fe, so it feels just like that. So for me, I personally don't have any issues with the braking feel on the Pilot, but the touching on suspension and handling up front, you're gonna get a McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as ride quality goes and my short little test drive here today, so far, it's been great. That's one of the things I muttered to myself when I first started driving this one actually is the ride quality is really smooth actually so absolutely no issues with taking this thing on a long road trip to ocean city maryland or something like that i love the ride quality in the pilot no issues there as far as steering feel goes i will say it's a heavier feel than my santa fe it's not uh like a mercedes heavy steering feel or bmw but it's just right i'll just put it that way it's just right for what the pilot is typically hondas produce a little bit more sporty vehicles even if they're suvs not quite as sporty as mazda but definitely nice so i have no issues with the steering feel as far as cabin noise goes we're going 30 miles per hour right now as we're slowing down to a stop but it's been it's been fine there is a little bit of road noise but honestly it's nothing that would personally bother me it's pretty much as you would expect this thing to sound like but then touching our rear visibility we don't have the third row up right now so there's no third row headrest i can judge at the moment but I can see perfectly fine out the back, uh, and that's partly due because of the shape of the Pilot. It's not a swoopy back end, so it's more of a boxier back end, so for that reason, rear visibility is 100% on point. Did want to also mention though, rain sensing windshield wipers do come standard on the Elite and Black Edition trim levels only, so whenever this thing detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's going to automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you, so it's kind of like automatic headlights, just one less thing you got to worry about there. And then also for those two trim levels, there is also a head-up display display which i am currently looking at it's a lot easier to see without sunglasses i will say that but it's pretty darn bright i actually like it so it is projecting my speed speed limit and safety features up on my windshield it just speed limit just popped up for me there so that's pretty cool so better help assisting with forward visibility yet again but that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2025 honda pilot all right so here she is you guys the new 2025 honda pilot finished in platinum white pearl in case you were curious of our exact exterior color name that we had on this one with us here today but as always let's go ahead and start with where the pilot is made taking a look at the vin first character is the number five indicating that the new honda pilot is built and assembled here in the u.s specifically Alabama, in case you were curious. But starting up front, black front grille is going to come standard. You're going to find a gloss black front grille, though, for the trail sport trim level end up. You also do get active grille shutters, meaning the grille shutters will open and close dependent upon the engine cooling that is needed at any given time. BMW, I think, started that, so that was kind of a cool feature. But LED headlights do come standard for every single trim level across the board. I love that as well. It isn't always the case. You do get LED daytime running lights. You also get the automatic feature. You also to get automatic high beams for every single trim level across the board so that is pretty cool too also though you guys can see down below led fog lights they actually do come standard for all trim levels as well so i do love seeing that as well because that's another one that doesn't come standard all the time for all trim levels but also just above those fog lights you do have some front air curtains helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination for a little better aerodynamics as well but anyways that pretty much rounds out the front end of the pilot let's now go ahead and make our way to the side all right so now since we are around to the side of this one i'm so happy we actually have a sunny day for once when i'm reviewing cars but gloss black roof rails coming with the sport trail sport touring and elite you guys can see those up top there rear privacy glass coming standard across the board led door handle lighting for the touring trim level and up so that's going to be a little more useful at night of course power adjustable side mirrors do come standard they're going to be matte black for the sport body colored for the exl touring and elite like you guys are looking at gloss black for the trail sport and black edition they will be heated with the integrated turret signals for the exl trim level and up and then you get the reverse gear tilt down feature for that exl trim level end up as well then taking a look down at the wheel setup, 18 inch alloys for the EXL and Trail Sport, 20 inch alloys then for the Sport, Touring, Elite, and Black Edition trims. But that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back of the Pilot, all the way to the top, you are going to find a body colored shark fin antenna just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, just below that rear window wiper, of course. You got the Pilot lettering spelled out horizontally in between the two taillights there. Speaking of, LED taillights do come standard for every single trim level across the board. Got some trim level badging found on the rear tailgate there. I'm laughing because this is my uh, 
unfavorite part here. All the way to the bottom, you got some really cool rectangular, what looks like exhaust outlets, but they're fake. It's all a lie. So just underneath you will find dual exhaust outlets, but they are tucked away. They don't actually go through those uh, little, uh, what looks like openings in the back, unfortunately. But anyways, having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next here. As always, here is that exhaust clip. Alright, so now since we are around to the back of the pilot, when it comes to opening that rear lift gate, it is a power lift gate for the EXL trim level and up, but then a hands-free power lift gate for the Touring Elite and Black Edition trim level. So you just kick your foot underneath. If your hands are full, it's going to automatically open up. But there is a button on the key fob. It's actually a button kind of by the driver's side left knee here in the driving position. And of course, there's a button on the lift gate itself as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 18.6 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, of course, that third row does fold down, bumping that up to 48.5 cubic feet. Then with all rows folded down, 87 cubic feet even, which is pretty much right on par for the course. That's what the Palisade comes in at. Telluride comes in at 88 cubic feet. Uh, Toyota Highlander, about the exact same thing. So they're all pretty much the same when it comes to overall cargo space. But 12 volt power outlet for the EXL trim level and up back there. Grocery bag hooks, of course. You got four cargo tie down anchors. LED cargo lighting, that's pretty cool. And believe it or not, if you lift up underneath of that cargo floor, there's actually a ton of in-floor storage, more so than I'm used to seeing. So that is quite impressive, actually. I liked that. But then making our way up to the third row legroom, that comes in at 32.5 inches. For reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had in the third row. So honestly, not horrible on paper there. I've definitely seen worse, but USB charging ports, actually, for those third row passengers, that is something you don't typically see. So I'm a huge fan of that. Uh, cup holders back there, but the rear ventilation placement kind of threw me off. I would prefer the rear ventilation being on kind of the ceiling of the pilot as opposed to right next to the cup holders. So if it's a cold day and you got a cold drink just because you like cold drinks and uh, you got the heat on, that heat is going to be essentially going right at your cold drink, which is, uh, it just doesn't make sense. That's why I think most SUVs put it on the ceiling. So Honda, uh, yeah, just check that out. But anyways, then making our way to the second row legroom, 40.8 inches for reference. I'm even six feet tall still this is how much space i have back there usb charging ports for the second row of course rear ventilation yet again captain's chair is coming standard with the trail sport they're going to be optional for the exl but it doesn't really matter here's why stowable second row center seat for the touring trim level and up so it comes standard with bench seating for like our elite trim level today but you can completely remove that center seat if you want a captain's chair so you kind of have both options here so I like that. Also wanted to mention tri-zone climate control does come standard for all trim levels across the board. So the rear passengers can always set their own temperatures back there. That was pretty cool. 115 volt power outlet back there as well. Heated second row seats coming with the elite and black edition trim levels to spoil the rear passengers a little bit there. And if you wanted the rear window sunshades, which you guys know I personally love, they come with the EXL trim level end up. They're always good if you get like fast food and you're sitting in a parking lot eating it or something like that. You got the rear window sunshade so the sun's not blinding one of your kids because it's always just one of them but anyways then making our way up to the front seats cloth seating coming with the sport synthetic leather for the trail sport leather seating for all other trim levels across the board 10-way power driver seat with two-way power lumbar does come standard heated front seats coming standard for all trim levels gotta love that memory settings for the exl trim level and up and then ventilated front seats for the elite and black edition overall my short little test drive here today seat comfort has been 100 perfectly fine so you're not going to have any issues there. Then taking a look at the steering wheel, it's tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped for all trim levels, believe it or not. And then a heated steering wheel is going to be optional. That button's located kind of towards the bottom of the steering wheel there. We got that. So that's pretty darn cool. It's definitely a nice hot steering wheel for me today. But then making our way to the startup, let me start by showing you guys the key. You got your Honda logo on the one side. When you flip it over, lock, unlock the button to pop the rear lift gate there. And the circular button, that's going to be your remote start. 
but it is all keyless entry with a push button start so all i'm going to do here is simply put my foot in the brake and press that engine start button located just to the left of those air vents the center air vents there so once started up there's two different gauge clusters there's going to be a seven inch digital cluster for all trim levels but the elite and black edition trims i feel like i had that one last year but this year we got the elite um but also for the black edition you get a 10.2 inch digital gauge cluster that's what you guys are looking at right now you got your uh, tachometers kind of on the left speedometer is on your right and there's a ton of information front and center including a digital speedometer there's speed limit recognition of course trip a trip b how many miles you have left until you hit empty outside temperature so pretty much everything you could possibly want on a digital gauge cluster and that's what's cool about digital gauge clusters it gives you everything it's all programmable but now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality a panoramic moonroof for the trail sport trim level and up led interior lighting does come standard across the board overhead sunglass holder with this school bus mirror so you could spy on your rear passengers that's always fun that's for all trim levels homelink controls for exl trim level and up that's for up to three different garage doors found just underneath of that rear view mirror there tri-zone climate control like i said all trim levels auto dimming rear view mirror for the exl trim level and up wireless phone charger located just in front of the shift buttons that's for the exl trim level and up i like that uh, just to the right of that wireless phone charger you got a little bit more rubberized storage just to the right of the shift buttons you have your dual cup holders but they're surrounded with like a matte gray black plastic i don't like that wish honda would have finished that in kind of like a silver or black design kind of like they did with the doors here that looks really good but then within the center armrest there's definitely a decent amount of storage within there so no issues there but cool thing is you get a little bit more added storage just above the passenger side glove box and it has a rubber bottom to it so things don't slide around most suvs don't give you that so i was a big fan of seeing that like i said there's this cool gloss black kind of uh, design going on on the door there i thought that was pretty cool i love the saddle brown slash black leather combination it's found on the seats also on the doors and everywhere so i was a big fan of that color combo overall i think honda did a very good job with the interior quality minus the surrounds around the cup holders here i would definitely change that but now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen a seven inch color touchscreen display is going to come with the sport however a nine inch color touchscreen display is going to come on the exl trim level and up so bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard either way android auto apple carplay either way but with that nine inch screen you get wireless android auto apple carplay so if you wanted less wires go with the bigger screen but you of course have that cool honda clock that they always tend to do and they always have done for quite a while now i always like that got your driving statistics up there if you wanted them along with your radio information so when it comes to the sound systems there are actually three of them so a seven speaker sound system with 240 watts comes with the sport then with the EXL and Trail Sport, you get a nine speaker sound system with 245 watts. And then the Touring Trim Level and Up is going to give you a 12 speaker Bose sound system. So having said that, we do have the Bose sound system with us here today. So let's go ahead and turn on the radio. Let's see what we got playing this morning and let's test out the clarity of this one. To be you don't know. All right, for King and Country is awesome. Let me just say that, I love that group, but yeah, that was crazy, man. Like, excellent clarity. Ton of bass when that kicked in. Like, that's a really good sound system. And Bose is extremely reputable as well. Back in the day when I got my Infiniti G35 Coupe, that had a Bose sound system in it. It never failed me. Nothing ever broke. So definitely a very reliable sound system company. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen is when you do put the pilot in reverse, you will find a very high definition, actually, rear view camera coming standard across the board. Got the surround view monitor as well to the right there, giving you that bird's eye view, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so IIA IHS Top Safety Pick Plus, which is the very highest rating given by IIHS, and that comes standard for all trim levels. So you got the best safety rating possible. That's a great start. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard. Driver and passenger knee airbags up front as well. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard honda sensing of course forward collision warning lane departure warning collision mitigation braking system road departure mitigation system it gives you lane keep assist traffic jam assist adaptive cruise controls traffic sign recognition driver attention monitoring system and a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert it's the little car icons in your side mirrors so you'll go turning into anybody but exl trim level and up is also going to give you front and rear parking sensors that one 
I love. So anyways, overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Pilot, very nice driving dynamics for an SUV, plenty of an acceleration. Also, the steering feel is definitely better than my own three row SUV, I'll just say that. Excellent safety as well. You can't beat an IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus. That's what Volvos get. So again, excellent safety, especially if you're gonna have kids in the back. That's definitely something you wanna check out. Tons of space, 87 cubic feet. That is 100% on point. Couple things to think about though. There is tons of competition in this particular segment. So there's the Toyota Highlander, the Hyundai Palace, the Kia Telluride, the Mazda CX-9. That's gonna be a lot smaller, of course, but it's still a three row SUV. And then if you want a little bit bigger, you got the Toyota Grand Highlander, you got the Chevy Traverse. There are so many different options for three row SUVs these days. It's absolutely insane. Honda is definitely still a solid pick though. And I also like that we are now in the third year for the fourth generation because I know consumer reports when this particular generation first came out they give it a well below average reliability rating so now that we're in the third year I would imagine if they were to re-rank them and I'm sure they have at this point re-ranked the pilot um, it's probably going to be a lot higher than that now that's typically how it goes I think everybody knows that but yeah go check out a consumer reports magazine I didn't even check the reliability before I did this but anyways let me know what you guys think of the pilot in the comments section below that's about it for this one you guys Thank you so much for watching. As always, feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews because that is what I have been doing now for 10 years. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.